Okay, so I've read quite a lot about Void IDE and I want to know if it's any good. Let's find out together. I'm going to test it with my prompt. If you don't know, I have a prompt that basically was used to create this website here. Beautiful website. I want to know if Void does a good job or not. Now I've tested out a little bit so far. It doesn't seem that amazing to be honest with you, but I'm going to give it one more chance here. Now, in order to set it up, if you want to add um, a new model that maybe isn't um, on this list, you just press added model here at the bottom of the settings. So you just go to settings here, add a model, and then you can put open router, for example, put the model name, and then it'll appear here. So that's why I had to do because I currently owe Google 1,500 euros due to Gemini use, um, and I'm not planning on paying that just yet. So I can't use the official Gemini API. I will pay that, obviously, but I'm not paying it just yet. So the really cool thing about this is it's a um, open source cursor alternative, but like it's on it's on news.ycombinator.com. I really don't trust when they say open source, free, blah blah blah. I, in my opinion, it's not going to be free for very long. I also also I can't actually see MCPs anywhere here, which um, is obviously a huge disadvantage. I can't use bright data to read the internet or anything like that. Uh, this is my current preferred MCP that I'm using for pretty much everything um, for scraping, etc. So that's a huge minus for me. Uh, I don't, I, I can't see MCPs anywhere here. Maybe here. No. This is one of the problems with free and open source. Like that sounds amazing. If you just say free and open source, you're like, okay, great, free and open source. But like, where's the where, where's the juice? Like if it takes them six months to add a feature like MCPs. I mean, it's just crazy, isn't it? It's not, it's not really that good. I mean, it's a free version of Cursor, great, but like it needs to be more on it if it wants to compete because it's, it doesn't seem to even have MCPs. Yeah, no mention of MCPs anywhere here. So I, I don't think they do have MCPs. I'm not sure if they do, but I can't, I can't find it anywhere. Okay, with that being said, let's do this. So we'll do terminal, new terminal here. I'll just say, can you give me the command to make a, actually, let's just go to my SOP here. So we'll go to my classroom on the school community. We'll go to all my prompts and workflows, and then we'll use this one right here. So I'll do a completely fair test. Oh wait, I need to give this a name. So void ID test. And we'll search for Rolls Royce on my computer. Um, we'll copy the public folder like this. And then once this is finished running, I will put this inside that folder. Hopefully I can control click like you can on Visual Studio Code, which I just learned about. Yeah, so I should be able to control click here. There we go. Perfect. Yes, I trust. Okay. We'll paste this, which is the public folder. And then we just need to grab the prompt here. And the only thing we need to do is we need to change this to the actual um, path, which is this. Okay, there we go. So we're using Gemini 2.5 Pro. So if it can't do it, then the reason is obviously the IDE, because if you take this to any IDE, uh, Visual Studio Code using Klein, Roo, whatever, all of them work really, really well. So, yeah, I'm curious to see if this does work well or not. So we'll leave this running a little bit and we'll come back and see how it does. So being free and open source, um, like a cursor alternative is cool. I do like that. Two things though. Number one is like we already have Klein, we already have Roo, pretty much the same thing, um, but they have like dedicated teams. They're updating pretty much every other day. Um, and they really, really seem to care about the project. Now, I'm not saying that's not true with Void. It's just I'm not seeing as many updates as we do on something like Klein, which is literally every other day. This looks like it might be a one or two man army. Let's see how many contributors it has. That's normally good. OK, so it has 39 contributors. Let's actually look at Klein GitHub and see how many contributors that has. I'm guessing it has way more. 151. So yeah, you can kind of see the difference just from that. And let's have a look at Roo code, which is an even newer project than Klein. Although I know that he has a small team, 
Um, so it might be a little bit different. Yeah, it looks like they don't show their contributors on the side. So one thing that I really don't like is like, why did it just stop? Why did you stop, lol? Like, I don't want to shit on this thing at all. Um, it, it does seem fine as like an open source um, alternative to something like Cursor. But it does just kind of get stuck. It hasn't even started doing anything yet, which is, yeah, pretty crazy. Okay, so it seems to be getting on with things now. I mean, if this is people's preferred method, like uh, if they prefer to have an IDE, then at least you're not paying for Cursor. So that's definitely a plus. Now, the issue with Cursor is um, you're using their API keys. You're paying them a monthly subscription. So the problem with what we're using now, Void, is that you're using your API keys, right? So if you have a low rate limit, then it might be better for you to use something like Cursor. But depending on your rate limit, I would say if you have a low rate limit, probably go for Cursor. But if you have a decent rate limit on Gemini or Claude or whatever, I would definitely consider going with something like Void because, I mean, you're just going to save money overall because you're not paying Cursor money. Now, one thing that I do always, I, I do talk about this a lot, though, is like free versus paid tools. Now, most people gravitate towards free tools, right? So even me, like I gravitate towards free tools. I like Klein, for example. I really like Roo, Code, both free tools, right? But the thing is with a paid tool, right? Something like Replit, I think they're worth like 4 billion, right? Replit's valuation is 1.16 billion. Okay, so they have an incentive. One six, Jesus, 1.16 billion is crazy. They have an incentive to be the best of the best because they're making money from it. They can afford engineers. They can raise more money. They are financially incentivized and money walks, right? Or whatever the saying is. Um, they are financially incentivized because they want to be worth 4 billion, let's say, at their next uh, valuation to be the best possible tool. So I've used Replit recently and I have to say like its building is much smoother than something like Root or Klein. But it's kind of up to you guys. I, I split these into free paid um, and then on this side there would be Cursor which is, can be free. I guess it's not free, it's a paid tool. So we have Cursor here, Windsurf and then here we have Void, right? So at least now we have a completely free AI first IDE. So that is a big thing for us, for sure. But Cursor, again, is financially incentivized. I think they're worth 3 billion, right? They're financially incentivized. Jesus Christ, no way, man. That is crazy that they're worth 10 bill. All they did was fork Visual Studio Code and then improve it. That is actually mad that they're worth 10 billion. So Cursor, again, they have a financial incentive to be the best of the best. I actually think Replit should be worth more than Cursor, but that's just my own personal opinion. Now, the only other thing to talk about here is like the difference between um, do-it-yourself DIY tools and um, done-for-you DFY tools, right? So Replit is a done-for-you Replit. Now, although, and also like Lovable, and bolt right although these tools are amazing like the one thing i don't like about them is that you're not actually learning like how things work in my opinion it's best to start with diy or even if you're a zero coder you still should start with diy because at the end of the day you're you need the experience you need to learn what you're actually doing right but the DFY tools, Replit, is definitely the best out of the ones that I've used. And I understand why some people will gravitate towards a DFY. They don't care about learning this, learning that. They don't care about databases or any of that stuff. They just want to make and make money, right? But DIY, definitely, I would put Klein and Roo at number one for me. And then Cursor and Void, which are like the... They're kind of DIY, DFY, they're, they're IDEs basically, so they're code editors, whereas Rue and uh, Klein are Visual Studio Code extensions.
Okay, so let's actually test this out and see how it does. So npm install here, and then npm run dev. God knows. Oh. Okay, so we have an error here. We'll send this error here. <clears throat> Finish all the steps and fix this error. I will say Gemini makes this issue like no matter what um, thing that I'm using isn't necessarily, it's not necessarily indicative of void being bad. Um, it is actually the model in this case. Okay, like um, uh, I'm, I'm getting annoyed now. I, I can make this in five minutes using Klein. I don't know what the issue is. I don't know if it's prompting. I don't know if it's Gemini. I, I, I don't know what the problem is. But I will say at least it's free. So we'll give it that. It is free. But it doesn't seem as good as Klein. It doesn't seem as good as Cursor. It doesn't have MCPs and it doesn't seem as good as Root. I'm a big fan of people not wasting their time. I would say only use this if you don't want to pay for Cursor. That's basically the only reason I would ever use it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very soon with some more content. Peace out.